This page has been reproduced without comment by Jean Varenis. Delightful little book, Zarathustra et la Tradition. Mas Dine. Series Mattress Spirituals, Ed Seal Paris. 1966, page 122. It is also reproduced in Mohammed Mokri's Learn Study, La Lumiere et Le Fio Dons. E. Iran Anchian Leuven, second edition, 1982, page 81, with passing comments on the sacred fire and the mistaken assumption that both male figures represent Zoroastrian priests. Gal Sherva is also depicted, as mentioned earlier, in an Elamite silver figurine about three inches high, housed in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York, 13. She is seated on her knees. Holding a large carafa in her front hoofs. It seems she is offering a libation, perhaps her own milk. She wears a striped skirt with a tiny design between the stripes. One of her ears is pierced and large ring inserted therein. Again, a symbol of her servitude to man. She looks a pathetic little figure pleading for protection in return for the libation she is offering. Both Mary Boyce and J. Dekensa Gilderman point out that the myth of Gyashava has come down to us from very ancient times in diverse forms in India. Georgia and in the Book of Enoch in a Slavonic version, Dukensa Gilderman A-R-T-C-I-T, page 9. Gyaush Tasha, closely associated with Gyaush Shiva, is Gyaush Tasha, the shaper of the cow or creator of cattle. In Yaza 29, when Gyaush Shiva complains of the brutality practiced upon her by mankind, then it is Gyaush Tasha who approaches truth and inquires as to who will appoint to protect her. Yasna 29.2. Yashtasha is next referred to in Yasna 31.9. O her Mazda, since to you belongs devotion, to you the creator of cattle, and to you the dynamism of the spirit, therefore you gave her the cow, the choice of the way, either to stay with the caring herdsman or with him who never was one. Yasna 31.9. Again, Gyash Shah is mentioned. Whatever is yours through truth, whatever the creator of cattle, Gyash Shah, has declared to truth, with these all men will question me through the good mind. Yasna 46 9. These are the only three references to Gyash Shah and the Gatas. It is not clear what exactly is the function of this symbol. Twin mentalities. Zarathustra, however, has yet to explain to his listeners how evil came into the world. He does so in Yasna 30, 1 through 11, and 45, 2. Again, as in the legend of Yashava, he makes use of an ancient parable concerning the twin menu or mentalities. Wam he describes as Vau, the better, and Akim, the evil mentality. These two are in opposition to each other in thought, word, and deed. Man has to choose between these two. Zarathustra is unique in insisting that each individual choose between these two tendencies and so be fully responsible for his actions. Listen to the noble's teachings with an attentive ear. With your penetrating mind, discriminate between these two mentalities, man by man, each one for his own self. Awake to proclaim this truth before the final judgment overtakes you. Yasna 32. He then proceeds to explain the parable. In the beginning, that is, the time began, the twins revealed themselves in the vision and established Gaia, or mortal life, and Ajaiti, non-life. The wise and the generous chose correctly between these two, but the unwise and mean did not. 
Now the evil mentality elected to perform the worst deeds, but the most bountiful spirit who dwells in imperishable light chose truth. And so did those who rejoiced at her Mazda by their actions. The false gods, Devas, and their worshippers did not discriminate between these two. Confusion came upon them as they debated, and so they chose the worst mind straight away. They fell headlong into wrath, and so poisoned not only the life of mankind, but the whole of existence. The sincere individual, however, is not left helpless. Ahura Mazda's sovereignty comes to his aid through the good mind and truth, while compassionate devotion bestows upon him the sustaining breath of life. Yasna 37 Retribution, however, overtakes those who choose wrongly. It is then that Ahura Mazda's truth and good mind ensure the sovereignty to those who deliver the lie into the hands of truth. Yasna 38. The lie and the truth cannot exist within each other. Truth will absorb the lie and annihilate it. Zarathustra therefore asks, How shall I deliver the lie into the hands of truth to destroy it completely through the sacred words of your teaching? Yasna 44, 14. The power and prosperity of the wicked will also be destroyed at the same time. The truth seekers will share in the promised reward and dwell with a good mind, truth, and wisdom. Yasna 30, 10. This chapter concludes with the following assurance to all mankind. So understand, O mortal men, the decrees which Mazda has established regarding happiness and misery. There will be a, per a long period of suffering for the wicked and salvation for the just, but thereafter eternal bliss shall prevail everywhere. Yasna 30, 11. Life becomes a battleground between the Ashavans, the seekers after truth, and the Dregvans, worshippers of falsehood, the Drudge, the lie.